My name is Tracia Jackson, and I'm a professor of mathematics at the University of Michigan. Yes, I would say um, math always came naturally to me. Um, and my parents fostered it at home uh, with playing games associated with math. And when they noticed that I had sort of an aptitude for it, they took an identity affirming approach and always made sure I felt comfortable um, being good at math and being a girl. You know, I didn't really know I wanted to become a mathematician until someone told me that I could be a mathematician. It just never crossed my mind. I entered college as an engineering major, and then I was sort of invited to become a math major. So that invitation into the discipline was a critical transition for me. Um, just having someone tell me that they thought that I had the potential um, to make a contribution in the field of mathematics um, changed my whole trajectory in college. I am an applied mathematician, and that just means I use math to solve real world problems um, and potentially make an impact on the world. Um, the problems that I work on um, come from biology and medicine, uh, so I'm considered a mathematical biologist. Um, biology is a huge field, uh, so within biology, I primarily work on cancer. Um, so now people who combine math and computation with cancer research are called mathematical oncologists. And so that's what I consider myself. Um, and in terms of what I do, I, I write down systems of equations or mathematical models that describe tumor growth and therapeutic options for them. Um, these models take the form of ordinary differential equations, partial differential equations, some hybrid approaches that mix those continuous uh, differential equations with discrete approaches, all trying to capture the complexity uh, associated with the biology of cancer so that we can uh, use math and computation to try to optimize uh, new treatment strategies. That's a great question. And in order to answer it, I have to tell a little bit of a story. So I did my undergraduate degree at Arizona State University, which is about 10 minutes from my house um, that I grew up in. Um, and so I started going there um, during the summers in high school. I, I knew the college. I had met um, a like-minded cohort of underrepresented minority students who were interested enough in math to spend eight weeks in the summer in high school um, doing math uh, together. And so when I went to college, I felt supported. I felt um, in an environment that helped me excel. So then fa fast forward to graduate school. Um, I no longer had that daily support system, that group of peers that were on my side and we pushed each other forward. Um, and I also met students who were 20 times more prepared for graduate school than I was. So I actually lost a lot of confidence when I you know, transitioned into graduate school and I had to fight my way back. Um, I had to learn to believe in my own excellence again, I had to find my voice again. It really shut me down in terms of, um, you know, being too embarrassed to raise my hand and, and attempt to answer a question. So I had to find my own voice again. Um, and through all that, I learned a lot. I learned how resilient I am. I learned um, I, I'm able to persevere through these um, ups and downs that a career mathematician faces. Um, so yeah, it struggles make you stronger. So in my career and professional life, I think my proudest accomplishment um, is receiving the Blackwell Tapia Prize. Um, and this is a prize that recognizes someone who's made um, a significant contribution to research in their field, but who has also worked to address the problem of underrepresentation of minority groups in math. And um, that just meant so much to me to have a community of my peers um, sort of deliver this honor to me. And I received this award at um, uh, MBI at Ohio State, the Mathematical Biosciences Institute. And um, it, so that's the research that I do. So it's just very moving, meaningful moment to, to, to be recognized, not only for the research that I do, but for the contributions that I try to make um, with the pipeline uh, for underrepresented groups in math. I was lucky enough to have the right people 
walk into my life at the right times um, at these critical transition points in my career. So I already mentioned I was invited to be a math major. And that invitation came from my very first mathematical mentor, Dr. Joaquin Bustos, who is at Arizona State University. And he is the one who uh, mentored me all throughout my undergraduate um, uh, tenure and then um, through into graduate school as well. Um, and then when I was in graduate school, I realized I wanted to do mathematical biology and my dissertation advisor became uh, the biggest influence and, and greatest mentor um, in terms of the research and career path that I ended up taking. And then, you know, I transitioned from graduate school into a postdoc and my postdoc advisor, Mike Reed, who's at Duke University, is still, you know, my go-to person when anything in my career, um, whenever I hit those bumps in the roads in my career, my professional life, he's still the person I can call and um, will give me the best advice um, as to, you know, how to proceed in academia. So I've had mentors enter my life at just the right times, and it's been a real, real um, blessing um, to, to have known these people and to have them um, sort of take me under their wings and help shepherd me uh, through, um, you know, all these transitions in my career. I guess I'd like to share my view of excellence, which is that Excellence has many facets and many faces. And I think as a student, or especially if you're an underrepresented um, minority student coming up through mathematics or any STEM discipline, you really have to learn to believe in your own excellence. I had to relearn how to do that. And um, it, it's so important to know that there's excellence within you.